This presentation is preceded by a video on DNA synthesis. Here, I am going to talk about initiation of DNA replication. I would encourage the interested audience to take a look at the previous video as well. The material contained in this presentation has been taken mostly from the book Fundamentals of Molecular Structural Biology. In an earlier video, we have seen that in DNA replication, two identical replicas are produced from an original DNA duplex. Looking at one of the two original strands of the duplex, we found that deoxyribonucleotides or DNTPs, which are the building blocks, are added one after another to the growing complementary strand. DNA synthesis on the two strands of the duplex is coupled. At any point of time during the synthesis, one can find that the duplex has opened up at the site of synthesis in the form of a fork. This is the replication fork. So now, both the strands are available as templates. A number of proteins assemble at the fork as a replisome. At the head of the fork is the primosome, which is the combination of the helicase and the primase. The primosome synthesizes the primer, shown in light green. Most crucial in the replisome is the enzyme complex called the replicase, which contains the DNA polymerase that carries out new DNA synthesis, shown in red color. The two strands orient themselves in such a way that the coupled DNA polymerases move in the same direction. So, in spite of the anti-parallel layout of the two strands, synthesis on both proceeds in 5' prime to 3' prime direction, although the synthesis is continuous on one strand and discontinuous on the other. Now, obviously, there must be a site on the chromosome where the duplex is originally melted. This site is called the replicator. And further, there must be a transacting initiator protein that works on the replicator to start the replication process. In the bacterium Escherichia coli, Orici is the replicator and DNA A is the initiator. E. coli Orici contains five nine base pair repeat elements R1 to R5 with consensus sequence TT, AT, CC, ACA. These are binding sites for the initiator protein DNA A and hence these are called DNA A boxes. They are almost identical in sequences, yet they differ in the affinity for DNA A and this is possibly due to the flanking nucleotides. There are sites I1, I2 and I3 where DNA A binds with reduced affinity. This region also contains binding sites for architectural factors IHF, HU, and FIS. Close to the DNA boxes in ORIC is an AT rich DNA unwinding element DU containing three 13 mer repeats. Within these 13 mer repeats, there are boxes with a 6 mer consensus AGA TCT. These boxes bind to ATP DNA and hence they are called ATP DNA boxes. However, 
dew should be in a melted state for this binding. Accordingly, ATP DNA binds to the DNA segment that includes DNA A boxes R1 and R5. Next, ATP DNA oligomerizes to form a nucleoprotein complex containing approximately 20 monomers. This nucleoprotein complex, aided by superhelicity of the DNA and architectural factors IHF and HU, causes initial melting of the DNA within dew. The initiator DNA A has to perform multiple functions. Bind to the DNA, bind ATP for homo oligomerization and interact with helicase and other accessory proteins to initiate replisome assembly. To carry out these functions, DNA A protein is organized in four domains. Structures of three domains, one, three, and four, have been determined using DNA A purified from different bacteria. The N terminal domain 1 has several functions related to protein protein interactions. Domain 2 is a flexible linker required as a spacer to keep domain 1 and domain 3 4 in proper positions while the DNA A is in action. Domain 3 contains the ATPase motif. It is responsible for nucleotide binding. This domain can also interact with single-stranded DNA. Domain 4, which is the C-terminal domain, is responsible for binding to double-stranded DNA. Domain 3 of DNA A can be further subdivided into two subdomains, 3A and 3B. Subdomain 3A contains an alpha-beta-alpha -alpha nucleotide binding fold. This fold is made of a parallel beta sheet sandwiched between two alpha helices, and this is the core of the subdomain. 3B is essentially a three helix bundle and this is the lid of the subdomain. 3A and 3B are connected by a short linker. Two of the subdomains together contain signature sequence motifs required for ATP binding and hydrolysis such as Walker A, Walker B, sensor 1, sensor 2, and specific amino acid residues in these motifs that interact with phosphates of ATP. DNA A domain 4 contains a helix turn helix motif that is essentially responsible for binding of the protein to the DNA. Residues of a signature sequence, RDH, TTVL, are inserted into the major groove of the DNA and interact with certain base pairs and the phosphate backbone. There are hydrogen bonds, ionic interactions between basic amino acid residues and the negatively charged DNA backbone phosphates and Van der Waal interactions of some amino acid residues with thymine. Additionally, a basic loop containing an arginine residue interacts with some base pairs in the minor groove through hydrogen bonding. In the ATP bound structure of DNA A, the lid, that is domain 3B, guards the nucleotide binding site in the core.
that is domain 3A. Therefore, self-assembly of the monomer, that is oligomerization, is prevented. In the ATP bound state, the gamma phosphate of ATP interacts with an arginine in sensor 2. So the lid is now opened. A box 7 arginine enters the cleft of a neighboring protomer and interacts with the gamma phosphate. This leads to dimerization and subsequently oligomerization. Once DNA A has melted the dew, it has to recruit the helicase DNA B. DNA B forms a stable homohexamer with a ring configuration. Each monomeric subunit consists of an NTD, a CTD connected by a linker helix. The amino acid residues involved in the interactions with DNA A are located in the NTD and LH. Here we have DNA A, DNA B interactions. Some basic amino acid residues in DNA B NTD, which are positively charged, interact with some negatively charged acidic residues in DNA A domain 1. Additionally, a DNA B leucine hydrophobically interacts with a DNA A phenylalanine. Although DNA B can directly interact with the DNA A, in some bacteria such as Aquifex, it needs the assistance of a helicase loader to be loaded onto REC in a functionally active form. DNA-C is a helicase loader. DNA-C contains two domains, a smaller N-terminal DNA-B binding domain and a larger C-terminal ATPase domain. An arginine and a tryptophan of DNA-C are important for binding to specific residues of DNA B. Once DNA B is loaded, its task is to recruit the primase DNA G. DNA G consists of three domains, N-terminal zinc binding domain, for template recognition, central polymerase domain for primer synthesis, and C-terminal helicase binding domain which couples replication for progression with primer synthesis. Interaction with the replicative helicase involves the last eight amino acids in the C-terminal helix hairpin of DNA G. The C-terminal domain of DNA G also interacts with single-stranded DNA binding protein. The C-terminals of SSB is amphipathic, containing three aspartates followed by three hydrophobic residues. There is a highly conserved hydrophobic pocket on the surface of the C-terminal domain of DNA G. This pocket is surrounded by basic residues. The basic residues interact with the aspartates, while proline and phenylalanine contact the hydrophobic pocket. The primase associates with the template through contacts with the SSB. At this point, DNA B and DNA G together constitute what is known as the primosome. The CTD of DNA B has an ATPase activity. So 
it couples nucleotide hydrolysis with DNA unwinding. The primase, on the other hand, synthesizes short oligoribonucleotide primers. Once the primer is synthesized, the primase must give way to the replicase, which in the case of E. coli contains DNA polymerase 3. So, the replicase can now extend the primer with DNTPs. The switch from the primase to the replicase is affected by the chi subunit of DNA polymerase 3. Similar to DNA G, chi has a binding site for SSB. A hydrophobic pocket accommodates the terminal proline and phenylalanine of SSB. The adjacent basic residues interact with the negatively charged aspartates. Now, binding of chi to SSB destabilizes the primase SSB contact. So, the primase falls off and the replicase associates with the template. 